Hello and welcome back to this session where we're exploring how utilities organisations can redesign their customer retention strategies to reduce overall churn. Now, in this session, we're joined by representatives from Itineris and Microsoft to tackle how organisations can ensure excellent customer retention and experience can be delivered throughout periods of uncertainty. And so if you're interested in what they have to say, you'll find more information over at their hub. So it's a big topic. So let's meet our experts. So first up is Tom Jenkins. Hello, Tom. Hi. Now, Tom is the sales manager for the UK at Itineris, the IT company focused on the utilities sector. And Tom has been working with utilities in the UK and Europe for over 10 years. Great to have you with us, Tom. Also representing Itineris is Chris Marlane. So hi to you, Chris. Hi, Sarah. Now, Chris is the Vice President for Integrated Utilities for Itineris and has over 17 years experience in the utilities industry in North America, in Europe and in the UK. So thanks so much for joining us. And finally, Richard Rouse. Hello, Richard. Hello, Sarah. Now, Richard is an industry solutions specialist at Microsoft and uh, focused on energy and the utility sector and works with Microsoft customers and partners to develop and deliver digital transformation programs. So pleasure to have you all three of us with us. Let's uh, crack on and thinking about unpredictable events. Uh, they present big challenges for utility companies. And a part of that is ensuring that you can ensure that you can serve your customers continuously all the time kind of thing, and, and even go above and beyond. So what areas do utilities companies need to focus on, would you say, to provide this level of service? And I guess I'm going to come to Tom first. Hi. So for me, it's uh, accessibility. Um, from a utility company to their customers. Um, having the ability as a utility supplier to provide your customers the ability to contact you at any time, um, from any place, through any channel, is very, very important. And that's about being digitally ready, which enables that accessibility. So having um, digitization throughout your uh, IT infrastructure, um, connected systems, gives you the ability to react through uh, to customer interaction. Um, because really, in the current climate that we're in, um, customers are most likely to try and interact with you digitally today. So having that access to accessibility is, is really, really key. And uh, an example that uh, I saw recently was that Welsh Water um, in October 2020 had a 74% increase in uh, customer digital interaction versus um, the same period in, um, in October 2019 um, last year. And so Again, it's being able to respond to that increase in uh, digital interaction from your customers is really, really important. Um, and of course, as a, as a consumer here for utility companies, um, myself, it's important that I know I can access, uh, have a response from my utility company at any given time because customer experience is intrinsically linked with loyalty. And if my customer experience is poor in terms of my interaction with you, my utility supplier, I'll probably go and choose another utility supplier to, uh, to do business with in the future. Mm. What would you say, Richard, what can we learn from Microsoft about, you know, in unpredictable times, continuing to give really good service? Yeah, I would, uh, my immediate response would be to say, you know, are these events necessarily unpredictable? Uh, and could we do more to predict and, and prepare for them? So, so I guess three, three thoughts on this topic. You know, firstly, better prediction of events using data and predictive analytics, leveraging both internal and external data sets to, to predict such events, to understand the impact of these events on, on services and, and hence on the customers. Secondly, better response to such events, meaning preventative actions and or mobilization of people, plants, uh, parts, etc., as necessary. Uh, and, and third and finally, um, prioritize support for impacted customers according to their situation and specific needs. Uh, and I'm thinking especially of vulnerable customers. So overall, I would advocate a data-driven approach to predict, prevent, prepare, and mitigate the impact of such events. What, what would you say, Chris? Uh, what's yeah. your answer to this one? 
Yeah, so so I think to, to Richard's point, eh, it's all about uh, knowing your customer and a strategy of a, a one size fits all to approach your customer is not the right one. Uh, the, the, the utilities should have uh, the data and in many cases they do uh, to, for instance, uh, detect vulnerable uh, customers. The, the, the true challenge is really on translating uh, that data into actions. And so it can really serve a digital customer journey. So uh, I really believe that utilities uh, shouldn't settle uh, in just having, uh, let's say, reports on their data. It's really what they do with it, what they do with the data. So Richard, what I'm hearing is that you, you think maybe utilities companies should be much more proactive in what they do to provide top quality service in these unpredictable times. They should already know that the unpredictable thing is coming. Uh, yes, indeed. But you know, the big issue here is that for a lot of companies, they don't necessarily have outbound digital contacts with their customers, e.g. current email, mobile number, etc. Uh, in fact, in many cases, they only have the bill payer's name and postal address, which you know, doesn't lend itself to digital interaction. Of course, this can be improved and, and companies should use every customer interaction uh, as an opportunity to maintain and enhance this, this data. But what, what's more important, I think, for, for both proactive and reactive support is, is knowing the relationship between the event or intervention in the case of plan works and the customers that are or likely to be impacted by that event with the ability to surface the relevant information, both via physical and digital channels to, to inform the impacted customers. Uh, but this isn't easy because data is siloed across different customer and operational systems. So you need to break down these silos to show a full 360 degree situational view of, of the event, its impact, and the best possible support that you can provide to customers according to their circumstance. And Chris, so slightly obvious question, why is it so important that customer service is so good in utilities? I suppose because electricity and water are just all the same product and, and how you differentiate is, is on your customer service, would you say? Yes, uh, it's, it's a correct statement. However, uh, sometimes uh, you, you confuse a 360 customer view with what Richard calls a 360 situational view. And there's a big difference uh, between both. Huh? I think uh, a lot of vendors can, can provide an omni-channel 360 customer view. I think only few can really link the, the available customer information to a better customer experience. Huh? So uh, to give you one example, uh, in the water industry, uh, we are working with uh, academics and uh, industry partners on creating a hybrid model for leakage uh, detection. So uh, that's, it's a model that generates a lot of information, possible incidents, but it's really important to, to, to link that information to a customer journey. Uh, so the customer feedback in that model is actually a key element. We, we treat the customer there as, a, as a, some kind of virtual sensor to feed the model, to enrich the model, to valid, validate uh, that model. So long story short, it's really important that the, the customer information you have, that you link it up with your digital processes, with your uh, digital um, uh, information. And Tom, today's customer really expects to be able to, to use all the omni-channel, multiple channels to uh, connect with their utilities providers. So how can organizations improve the way they invest in those omni-channel structures, do you think? And, and can this boost efficiency? Mm. Yeah, um, a good question. And um, again, it's about having that digital ability to provide uh, immediate reaction to that uh, digital customer interaction with you. And part of that is having end-to-end uh, -end digitization throughout your organization. So we um, see and talk to a lot of organizations with a really good front-end digital interface uh, for their customers, but an analog or manual um, back-end um, process uh, process system and and really as I say that the key is to have that end-to-end -end digital um, digital infrastructure throughout your organization because digital communications are are a quick and easy route to get customer data but also of course to be able to uh, understand what your customers want what their preference of communication with you is and um, in terms of uh, boosting efficiency, um, if we look at things like um, from a, an omni-channel perspective, uh, say a chatbot, so having that um, artificial intelligence um, in, your, in your infrastructure, 
a byproduct of having a chatbot as a way to communicate with your customers is a reduction of cost to serve. So an efficiency within itself there. Um, and data, of course, is at the heart of that, uh, understanding how and when your customers want to be uh, communicated with and through which channel. Um, but it, yeah, it's very, very key that you have uh, a multitude of, of uh, channels with which to communicate with your, with your customers so that uh, you can drive efficiency in the future um, and therefore business value going forward. And actually, someone was saying in one of our earlier sessions that they don't have any uh, call centers. You can't ring them up at all. It's all digital. They said, our customers don't want to ring us up. Uh, they want to handle it all digitally. You can't ring Amazon up. You can't ring eBay up. But the thing about those organizations is as soon as there's a problem, they give you a refund. They say, okay, have your money back. If mm -hmm. you've got a problem, if you're unhappy, have your money back. So you've got to offer that, haven't you, if you're not going to have call centers. Who wants to take that one? Yeah, it's a very good point. It's indeed the, the full digital experience you're talking about and not just calling through different kinds of, of, of channels. Uh, one example I always like to give is the one of uh, uh, taking a picture of your meter eh, and having uh, the AI technology that translates that meter reading into a, a, a con consumption you can put into your billing engine. Eh? Uh, uh, that, that you don't have to wait, you have, you have a reading, so just create the bill. Eh? You don't have to wait to, to create that bill. And even one step beyond that, you also can provide the capability to that customer to immediately pay that bill. And it's really a win-win situation because as a utility, you will get your money sooner. As a customer, you have a really great uh, digital experience. And I think that's what we should strive to, uh, really to have a win-win situation, both for the utility and for uh, the customer. Richard, how do you think that utilities companies can encourage more proactive engagement from the customer? Some people don't want to engage, do they? Just want their electricity to be there when they turn the switch on and don't want to have much else to do with it apart from that. Yeah, I think it's true to say that for, for utilities that most customer interactions are, are, are neutral at best or, or negative, uh, particularly for su supply interruptions, billing issues, etc. Uh, so, so the question is, how, how can these companies encourage more you know, positive, proactive engagement from both customers and communities, uh, especially on important topics like water conservation and, of course, the move to green energy? Uh, and that applies to both residential customers and, and big commercial and industrial users as well. Uh, for example, here at Microsoft, we've made two important commitments. Firstly, to be water positive by 2030, meaning that we will replenish more water than we consume. And, and secondly, to be carbon neutral or sorry, carbon negative by 2030, uh, i.e. reduce and ultimately remove Microsoft's carbon footprint. Um, certainly other commercial, industrial and residential customers should want to engage on these topics. And again, the answers are in the data to find and develop customer and community relationships beyond just transactional supply. That's it, isn't it? And, and Tom, how do you think that uh, utilities companies can use all this extra data that they can gather on their customers once they're operating in an omni-channel way? How can they use that data to create more insights and then to create greater business value? Yeah, and I think um, that's a really key question uh, for, for the market. And I think the, the bigger question, just to take it back a step first, is has your organization got the infrastructure uh, and business applications to, to manage, handle, uh, gather and process this data um, that that's the first thing really so um, you know have you got something like power bi to to visualize uh, that that information that you're receiving um, in terms of business intelligence and and to use for management information but also then as an organization you've got to trust that data uh, and use it across your organization as insight um, for for your future business um, development and, and strategy and that's partly around having um, relevant data sets, complete data sets. And uh, Chris and Richard mentioned earlier around having that single truth, um, that 360 view of your customer, but also the data. So all the multiple systems you've got in your organization, have you got the ability to view one version of that data um, to then use for, for insight? Um, and then it's about, yeah, acting on that data. And that might be, as I mentioned earlier, um, what channels you need to be using to interact with your customers, as well as um, establishing the right digital interfaces um, through which to, um, to efficiently serve them. And, uh, and of course, then drive business value through that. 
And actually, if I can ask um, each of you, coming to Richard first, obviously 2020, we've had the pandemic, in case you haven't noticed. What should utilities companies have been learning throughout this period regarding digital transformation, do you think, Richard? Uh, be more prepared, um, ha have, have the ability to respond more quickly and more flexibly. Um, uh, I think what we've seen clearly through the pandemic that remote working is really good. It can be made to work. It gives you far more flexibility in the workplace uh, and far better ability to continue under such difficult circumstances. Do you think Microsoft was prepared? Because I know certainly MS Teams sort of wasn't great until about August when they uh, did some upgrades and, and it had a lot more functions. So, so it did take Microsoft a while to kind of roll things out, would you say? So I, I'm, I'm not qualified to, to, to comment on Teams particularly, but um, we've obviously um, done a huge amount to support our customers in this time, uh, including not just Teams, but all of our technology um, helping organisations to transform to virtual working and, and rest assured we will continue to do so. And we are very, very grateful as we are all sat here virtual working, aren't we? But Chris, what do you think uh, utilities should have learned through this pandemic? Yeah, I think uh, uh, what we have seen uh, and talking with different customers is that uh, customers who already started uh, their uh, cloud journey had an advantage. And that's, uh, that was clearly uh, the, the, the employees transitioning to homework. If they only had to log into their browser and get the same environment again, then they would get into the office. It's a really a big, uh, a big advantage. I think that's, that's one uh, important uh, uh, thing we've seen. Uh, a second one is on, um, uh, on, on utilities uh, and the fact that they really have to be critical on their level of automation and you should be preparing a next, not the next pandemic, but there are always going to be unforeseen uh, events. Eh? Uh, so you need to prepare and have a business continuity plan. And we have seen very interesting exercises of looking on your level of automation and, and automation of certain processes and to tie that against your business continuity plan. So we really believe you should make that exercise uh, way in advance. Eh? Uh, maybe if I can add in another last point, uh, Sarah, uh, is, all, is, is all around um, having attention on your customer data platform. And we talk about that a lot with different customers. Then they say, oh, we have a really scattered IT and IT application architecture. Uh, that's not a reason not to look at a customer data platform. It's even more important eh, because you have your data across different applications and you need to have insights in it. So a true um, let's say focus and uh, and um, uh, yeah, being prepared and having your data uh, in a customer data platform is what we've seen to be uh, very important. And what would you say, Tom, finally, about what maybe good has come out of this pandemic in terms of, you know, pivoting and, and finding new ways of delivering? Yeah, I think we have learned as an industry, and I mean the utilities industry, that it is key that we we can interact with our customers through any uh, any mechanism um, necessary, and we need to have, as I mentioned uh, a few times, you know that that availability within our systems to um, communicate in an agile way uh, to all our customers as and when they need uh, to be communicated with, and we've also probably learned if. Uh, it wasn't known already for utility companies, you know, who your customer, uh, who your customers are, what those segments look like, what their makeup is, who are your vulnerable customers, uh, what priorities they, they need. Um, and, um, and yeah, you know, how flexible is your system to adapt to um, these predictable or, or albeit unpredictable events in the future? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Great note to end on. I'm afraid that's us run out of time. So thank you so much, Tom, Richard and Chris, for all your insights in this session, uh, how you can preserve excellent customer service in the face of unpredictability. And don't forget, you can connect with Tom and Chris directly on their hub. So you can visit this direct from that left hand bar on your screen. So we're going to be back in just a moment with a panel discussion all about creating next gen customer experience where we will be joined by Zebra Power, Northern Gas Networks and Sabio. So stay tuned. <laughs>